how do we know whether the audience has been persuaded? How the audience thinks about the message is influencing persuasion. Has the audience been persuaded? Uh, how do we know whether the audience has been persuaded? So how we think about the message will influence its persuasiveness. is is based on a research done by Petty and Kachiopo. How the audience thinks about the message will influence its persuasiveness. How they think. We want them to think in a different way. If we like what we hear, if we have positive thoughts about what we hear, so, if I like what I'm hearing, I will have positive thoughts about the message. You are trying to convince them to watch sci-fi movies, science fiction movies. If Indika is talking about science fiction movies in such an interesting way, if I like what I'm hearing, Indika says, you know, Sanjeev, it shows you spaceships, it shows you aliens, it shows you this, it shows you that. But I like this. I haven't seen those. True. Wow. Now I have positive thoughts about sci-fi movie. Then I am more likely to accept the message because I like what I am hearing and vice versa. If I don't like what I am hearing, I will have negative thoughts about it and I am not going to accept the message. So persuading the audience means I have to get them to like what I am saying. Then how do we respond to the message? Our cognitive response is the best predictor of persuasion. What do we do when we get the message? That's our best response. That's our best predictor of persuasion. Now, acceptance means there is positive affirmation. I say, ah, Upeksha, that's interesting. That sounds good. I'm saying with words, I'm saying, this sounds good, Upeksha. Positive affirmation. I might nod. That's also saying yes, no. I might smile. All of that is saying, I might clap. I might ask questions. So how do I find stamps, Upeksha? Now, if I'm asking a question like that, am I interested? Yes. If Tarinda is talking about playing the harp and I say, but Tarinda, how do I find a harp? Does that mean I'm interested? Yes. If I say, where can I find a good harp teacher? Does that mean I'm interested? Yes. So if I'm asking that type of questions, that is implementation type of questions. I'm trying to see how do I implement? What channels are playing Indian classical music? That's a question, which means I'm interested. So from the type of questions you can see is the audience now getting persuaded. If I'm asking why type of question? So why is, why is Indian classical music uh, good? It means I'm still not convinced. How, why, why would Indian classical music reduce my stress? It's a really annoying sound. No, that sita is an annoying sound. <laughs> then I'm, am I convinced? They say harp players are like angels. When I look at you, Tarinda, I don't see an angel. No. How can it be? Not convinced. I'm not convinced. Are you all understanding? So, you can by the questions they ask, by the way they are responding to you, you can know is the audience convinced or not. So, that's important. What do you want them to Remember, what's the key point? Why should they do what you ask? And what is the impact if they do what you ask? And very important, what is the impact if they don't do what you ask? What is the impact if they do? What is the impact if they don't do? Sometimes we only answer one. We say, what is the impact if you do this? We don't say, what is the impact if you don't do? Now we take Vasanta again. So Dr. Anurudhika says, Vasanta, why should they do what you ask? Because your test results are not good. You have to go and see Dr. Varuna. Impact if they do. Asante, if you go and see Dr. Varuna, he is going to give you some good medicine and he will help you. Now, is it enough to just say that? Let me also say what happens if you don't go. Asante, if you don't go, you can get a stroke. You might be paralyzed. You might lose the ability to speak, which means you can't sing also, which means you might not be able to play the guitar because your hand might be paralyzed. That might happen if you don't go. Then what will happen? Now he gets scared. My gosh. Even he's not scared of losing his life, but he's scared of not being able to play the guitar. So here you go. Are you all understanding? So we need to tell people what happens if they do this, what happens also if they don't do this. So Upeksha says there could be a situation where she's sure one or two members in the audience are not believing what she's saying. They are not convinced. How can she uh, tackle that, right? Ah, good. That is called people building resistance. There are people who have, who resist your ideas, who resist, resist the project. There is what is called type A resistance and type B resistance. Type A resistance is people who genuinely are interested in the company, interested in the productivity, but they genuinely don't believe these are good projects. But they are good people. So, Ekalangva, Ainkalla, Konkalla, Kapaladala, Askarla, 
it's not going to help you because they are good people. It's just that they are not convinced. Good people. So if you sack them or put them to a side or ignore them, you are going to lose because they are actually good members of your team. But they don't type, they don't, they are not convinced about the project. That's type A resistance. Type B resistance is people are resisting it because they don't like you or they want to sabotage or they are just troublemakers. Or they are scared that this project might, you know, lose, lose their power or lose their prestige or they may lose their job or something. So they are, they are resisting for their own personal gains. Type A resistors are not resisting for personal gains. They are resisting because they genuinely think this is wrong. So first of all, you have to see type A or type B. Let's say Lahiru is type B resistance. Can you think Lahiru is trying to do this resisting because he is trying to take my job? You know, you have to tackle in a different way. <laughs> but if you realize Anna, Asela, is actually type A, he's a genuine guy, but he's having questions, he's, why should we do this? Because the way I see, if we do this, we are going to actually lose something. Then you have to give him more data, more evidence and convince him. So he's a good guy, you know? So if you can really prove the point, see, this is the research I say, this is what other companies have done, here this is what it is, Why, when you say this, okay, do you have any evidence for that? Right? I'm not saying you're wrong, because he's, he's convinced. I'm not saying you're wrong, Where's the data? Nah, nah, I don't have data, but I think. No, but the seed has Now the thing is, I have data to back what I am saying. What do you think of this? Is there a reason that you don't believe this data? Then you can try to cut it.